All right, Shalom. This is Ahara One by Nyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp, located right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Before I begin, I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahawa, Ba Hashem Yahushai, Ba Hashem Haraka Kodash, Ma Amach. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. And Shalom to Akim and Akwatim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, yeah, you know, today, um, almost forgot, is. <clears throat> um, November 23rd and we know they celebrate their Turkey Day Thanks Killing Day and what the Gadites the North American Indians call the Day of Mourning alright because it was a it was a heavily heavy uh, slaughter and uh, massacre that happened uh, during those times man all right, so now um, I'm going to get into it. All right, so they say November 23rd is the day um, that the pilgrims, was they weren't pilgrims, they were thieves. Uh, this is what they teach us in school, that the pilgrims came over here and known as uh, settlers, and they settled in the land, and they, they met up with the Gadites, and the Gadites was real peaceful. And they made peace with each other, and they sat down and ate, and they had Thanksgiving. That's not true, man. That's a lie. All right. The fact is that they were they was um, thieves and murderers, like the Bible says Esau would be. That he would rule, rule by the sword, and gain the fatness of the earth, the increase of the earth by the sword, robbing, stealing, and killing. That's the name of their game. Now um, they got a quote that's, that's floating around the internet from uh, Christopher Columbus, who was, um, who actually never made it to the, um, the, the soils of North and South America. He actually made it to what you would call the Bahamas, Colombia, all right, where they ran into a lot of Taino Indians, or Ephraim, and Dominicans. All right, so, um, so now, I'm a, I want to read one of his quotes because there's so many areas to touch on if you go through this topic around this time of year. It can become frustrating because there's so many points to talk about the pagan um, values of Thanksgiving. Uh, you can go into the history of how they lied, all right, and how, they st and how Jake still celebrates it today. Now, it says... Um, the event that Americans commonly called the first Thanksgiving was celebrated by the pilgrims after their first harvest in the New World in November 1621, or in the 1600s. Now, we know 1600s, 1619, 1621, when it was dealing with Gad, 1619, when they brought us over here as slaves, all right, the first slaves really touched the soil uh, by trade over here in America. Uh, prior to that, they were going back and forth, taking Gadites back to Spain. Um, whoever, you know, and, and some of their technology they would bring over here, Esau, and, um, and take a lot of artifacts from over here in what they call the New World during what they called the age of discovery. Basically, they were going around taking shit, whatever they discovered. <laughs> and um, you had the queen, of, you had the, um, the crown of Spain, which was uh, Ferdinand and uh, Isabella that put out for the conquest or the doctrine of discovery. All right? And prior to that, you had them building what was known as slave warehouses to store us at halfway points from Africa, which would be like in Portugal, you know, and, and certain other islands. And um, so that, that was the initial start of the slave trade going all the way back to 1444 uh, AD with Henry the Navigator who built 
uh, what you would call, um, I forgot what it's called, Casa. It's some type of castle, man, they built. And he, he set it up as a warehouse, man. All right? And he started trading with Africans, trading with uh, uh, Arabs, trading amongst Europeans, uh, trading the children of Israel. <laughs> All right? So I want to get into that with that mindset. And when uh, it's known by the natives, Native Americans, the Gadites, amongst them that they were slaughtered on this day. After, after um, Esau would conquer them or kill, slaughter them, slaughter the Gadites, they would sit down and have a big meal and say they would for Thanksgiving. That's what it's really about. All right. Thanks for giving us your land. <laughs> and uh, they were taking them as slaves, man. Now, these evil settlers, they weren't nice people. Now, it says, uh, the first Thanksgiving was celebrated by the pilgrims, allegedly. But now, let's get this real quick. I'm going to get this quote from Christopher Columbus. <laughs> One second. All right, so this is the true mindset of those devils, those deceivers that showed up on the shores of America, uh, the, um, Americo Vespucci uh, initially discovered, uh, <laughs> anyway, however you want to look at it, you know, they arrived in Canada, Americo Vespucci, and then they moved uh, North America, and they also called South America and named it after um, I think the Britons they named it after America Vespucci all right commemoration of him so this is all scriptural that they were thieves and they took the lands and named them after them, themselves man just like we're seeing them in action today over there with Hamas in uh, Palestine it says, the Indian, this was a quote from Christopher Columbus, also known as Cristobal Colon. Uh, some argue whether he was Italian or French. That, that's not really important. The important part is that he was with them devils, and he was um, he was hired by Spain uh, to, to take the place of Amerigo Vespucci, all right, in conquest. And this was, this was one of his quotes of his experience when he met the Gadites man back then. The Indians, the Indians are so naive and so free with their possessions that no one who has not witnessed them would believe it. You wouldn't believe how kind and freely they were living amongst themselves, man. Yeah, you had wars, infighting, all right, but um, ultimately, amongst the Gadites, especially when he landed in Bahamas, um, he ran into a lot of Gad, a lot of, uh, I'll say, the northern tribes. All right, a lot of Dominicans was there. Um, I think Manasseh. No, it's uh, Cubans. Oh, so, like, what's the Dominicans? All right, kind of, I think that's um, the tribe of Simeon. They ran into a lot of Dominicans or Simeonites over there. All right, and also um, Tainos, Ephraimites. So now, um, this is part of the quote. It says, the Indians are so naive and so free with their possessions that no one who has not witnessed them would believe it, how kind they were. When you ask for something they have, they they never say no. All right. And now, and what Esau did, they took that as weakness. Check this out. It says, to the contrary, they offer to share with anyone. And you'll be like, oh, man, they're some kind people. You leave them alone. But look, it says, they would make fine servants with 50 men 
we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. So I'll show you the mindset of them devils, man. All right, that was that was their mindset, but they make it like it was the Thanksgiving and all this, this weirdo uh, celebrations that they're doing today. And then you got Jake, that's still following along with that mindset, and not caring and saying, "Hey, man, uh, it don't matter. It's all about family. You know, it's a time to link up with family. That's how I look at it. That's how you look at it. But we could also look at a piece of shit, but you don't want to smell it. You know." That's how they look at it. They look at it like it's brown and chocolate, but is, is that what it really is? No, it's a piece of shit. You know, this is a wicked holiday, a wicked uh, celebration. And it's celebrating murder. And over the years, in 1939, with uh, Franklin Dean Roosevelt, that's when they made it a national holiday and where they really continued to celebrate it and make to get the corporations to make money off of it, man. Selling all the Thanksgiving items, selling all the Christmas items, Black Friday, and so on and so on. Football games, all the Roman uh, uh, peanuts and circus. This is Proverbs 22, and um, it says, verse 2, the rich and the poor meet together. Yahweh is the maker of them all. Even today, they're all meeting together on their holidays, their folly days, right? A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. So we know judgment day is coming for what happened. The scriptures say, prepare slaughter for his children, for the sins of their forefathers. So we know the Lord about to judge these devils for what they did. And those sentence against the evil uh, work, um, what the scriptures say, um, a thousand years is as a day to the Lord. You know, as men count slackness, um, let me just get it. This is uh, Second Peter uh, 3 and 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. So everything's being kept how it is, intact. The wicked going to continue in their wickedness. And the hopeful righteous is going to continue in, in, in growing in righteousness, man. All the way until the day dawns, man. The kingdom. All right. The wicked so wax worse and worse. And the righteous is going to uh, uh, shine more and more until the, until the day star rises in their heart. So they're going to continue to, to, to celebrate these uh, these wicked folly, folly days, man. Because the word holiday is the same word as holy day. And this is not. This is a very unholy day, man, that they're celebrating. The day is beautiful. It's a fall day, autumn. Everything's brown. The time of year it is. Yeah, it's a beautiful season, but it's just they, their celebrations are wicked. All right. Um. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So those ungodly men starting with uh, Esau and two thirds of our people that want to continue to follow their path. All right. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. What's his promise? You go to Revelations, um, Chapter, I think, 13, where it says, um, He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the faith and the patience of the saints. So the Lord is not slack concerning his promise to judge Esau. All right? <clears throat> and to deliver the, church, the elect of Israel. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to, to usward, not willing that any should perish of the elect but that all should come to the repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So this rulership, this these celebrations they're doing for Esau is all going to pass away in the destruction of America. In the, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's that boom from the ICBM missiles. 
and explosions. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. There you go. Gonna be a bunch of burnt turkeys. Now let's get back to this um, quote. All right. It says here, the Indians... Okay, I was reading, I already read the quote from uh, Christopher Columbus. So I'm going to get back to the scripture. Proverbs chapter 22 and 3. The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. See, we're, that's the prudent man. All right? A prudent man is, is going to hide himself from what's to come, the destruction, the judgment. All right? So, and we hide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? <clears throat> to be prudent, it says the prudent man hideth himself, man. Acting as or showing care and thought for the future. See that do today what will help you tomorrow, not do today what will get you destroyed tomorrow. And that's what they're doing. They want to continue celebrating these holidays. You got the hopeful elect right among them, telling them it's wicked, saying it's off, you know, but they's like, nah, man, you. They try to stay away from you and avoid you. All right, look at you like you crazy. But so they did the same thing in Sodom and Gomorrah. They did the same thing in Egypt. All right, and they, they did the same thing in Israel during the 586 BC, seven, in the seventh century with the Northern Kingdom as well. They did the same thing in 70 AD, just didn't listen to the prophets. All right, really, they're just not listening to the, Lord, the word of the Lord, the spirit of truth, the right way. The Lord has made it very simple in two steps. One is uh, prohibition, and the other is uh, commandment. All right, to give commands, to obey his commands, and to, and to understand what's prohibited, what we're not supposed to do. It says, a prudent man... A wise man foreseeth the evil, and we're blessed to have foresight of what's to come, and hide of himself. But the simple pass on and are punished, man. That means the foolish, they're going to continue eating their turkeys. That's why the scriptures say that they shall eat the fruit of their own way. You know, ain't nothing wrong with eating turkey, but I'm talking about their celebration. When they sit around the table and they, they gather, but not on the Passover. You know, they gather on what they call uh, Xmas, but it's really um, a celebration for Nimrod. All right, so let me get this real quick. It says here, uh, let me type this in. Let me just type this in, man, so lucky. So it says, by humility and the fear of Yahweh are riches and honor and life. So that's what we should be thankful for, that the Lord is going to give us life. He said, uh, uh, I know thy works and thy poverty, but thou art rich. See, but two-thirds think that gain is godliness. They, they sitting around thinking uh, these, they're idols. You got a bunch of Muslims celebrating Thanksgiving. You got Christians celebrating Thanksgiving, you know. So, um, all right, so, <clears throat> so I'm going to read this real quick because it's pagan, man, um, uh, Thanksgiving that they celebrate. So it's not only the celebration of a massacre, but it's also pagan practices involved as well, just like science has pagan values, all right, and their celebrations have, um, our foundation is of paganism. <clears throat> All right, this goes into devil worship and idolatry. So let's, I just want to read this article I found. Um, it's, excuse me, it says, The Pagan Origins of Thanksgiving. It's almost time for Thanksgiving. One of, one of, okay, it says, We are familiar with the classic story of Native Americans dining with pilgrims. But our modern-day Thanksgiving has deeper pagan roots than many may be aware of. So let's dig in 
to the history of this holiday and reveal some surprising pagan elements. Part one, I'm not going to read too many, just, you know, just a basis of it. In America, it says, <clears throat> in America, it's believed that the first Thanksgiving took place in 1621. And we know two years prior to that, you had the slave ships arrive with uh, so-called Negroes upon them. But this was not the first time people gathered to give thanks for the autumn harvest. All right. So about the autumn harvest, you know, even in the scriptures, we had the autumn, the uh, the, f the first moon and the, the, the latter moon. All right. New moon harvest fe uh, feast. <clears throat> it says, in fact, people have been celebrating the harvest for millennia and our Thanksgiving meal is just a modern incarnation reflecting these ancient celebrations of autumn abundance. <clears throat> Most, but they're doing it with paganism. All right, devil, devil um, rituals. Most of our modern holidays, like Christmas, Ishtar Day, Easter, are, combination, are a combination of pagan and Christian traditions, which are both... Uh, wicked because the Lord never told us to be Christians Thanksgiving on the other hand doesn't have as much of a Christian influence while Thanksgiving is not tied to any one specific religion its traditions are quite similar to a number of ancient pagan harvest celebrations all right <clears throat> For example, in ancient Rome, they celebrated the holiday of Sorelia, all right, Sorelia, which honored the harvest goddess of grain called Ceres, Ceres, C-E-R-E-S, all right, in case you might want to do a lesson on it. There are around a hundred different harvest gods, man, idols, and goddesses from Greek and Roman culture, so it's clear that that celebrating the harvest season was a key feature of their their spiritual beliefs. Harvest celebrations were also vit uh, vitally important during Celtic and Anglo-Saxon uh, Anglo-Saxon pagan times. In Britain, these traditions evolved into a holiday called Harvest Home. Historically, the date of Harvest Home differed each year as it was celebrated when all of the autumn crops were finally harvested. The final cartload of the food was paraded through the town and a big harvest supper was celebrated among the villagers. Apparently, these harvest suppers started to get a bit out of hand and in 1867 were described as unrestrained riots and excess. <clears throat> all right, so that's what this is, man. It's basically folly. Okay, it goes into paganism. It says, uh, there are three key symbols that are common on Thanksgiving celebrations. The cornucopia, a.k.a. the horn of plenty. That would be the, 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 unit, the corn, the horn or some shit. The turkey and corn. All these symbolize... Symbols were viewed as very important among pagan societies. Let's begin with the cornucopia, which was an important symbol in ancient Greece and Rome. A cornucopia is a horned-shaped basket that is usually filled with harvest, fruit, and vegetables. This symbol goes back to a story from ancient Greece where a goat pulled off his horn and offered it to the idol, uh, their, you know, the false god Zeus. This was a magic, so-called magic horn that would refill in, um, um, indefinitely with food and drink, ensuring that their idol Zeus would never go hungry. <laughs> to give thanks to the goat, their, uh, their idol... Uh, the, the, the Zeus made 
the goat's image in the night sky. Get the hell out of here. See, these are all fables. Which became the constellation we now call Capricorn. All right, let's see what else they got about the turkey. <clears throat> All right, because um, that shit sound crazy. I don't even want to read more of that. The next symbol I want to mention is the turkey, which is the centerpiece of the American Thanksgiving dinner. Many Native American tribes view turkey as a symbol of fertility and abundance. <clears throat> as a totem animal, turkey reminds us of the importance of a relationship with the land as the land is the source of oh my goodness, man. Turkey feathers are also viewed as especially important and are used in ritual wear and in smudging ceremonies. So when we eat turkey at Thanksgiving, we are celebrating and honoring the connection we have with our s sacred lands and animals. <clears throat> That's that ritualistic shit. All right, so they got all these rit ritualistic beliefs. I'm um, dealing with this stuff, man. All right. So let's see. Um, all right. So um, <clears throat> Proverbs 22 and 4. By humility and fear, the fear of Yahweh are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. He that doeth keep his soul shall be far from them, man. See that? So far from the thorns and the snares, man, the traps that's being set up. See, people that's celebrating these holidays, the same ones that's following behind uh, Esau's agenda for a new world order. <clears throat> that's following behind all the wickedness in this society and these religions. But the... But the um, all right, so... Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. Froward meaning like if you tell your dog to go sit down, it comes run to you. Or if you tell it to, to sit, it starts running. You know, or you tell it to go running and it starts to sit down, doing the exact opposite of what you say. That's being, that's a froward animal. All right, so we tell people to stop celebrating these holidays and they go celebrate it. <clears throat> It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And you see these people not departing from it. They were trained up in that way. All right, the Lord the Lord woke us up from amongst the dead, the spiritually dead. But two-thirds still con are still continuing in, in that way. They see the guy that he's talking about the suffering and the mourning they're dealing with, and they're like, well, I ain't going to do with that. I still want to celebrate and link up with my family. You can link up with your family, but tell them the truth. <clears throat> the rich rule of over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Now, the rich have showed up over here and conquered this land, and still to this day, they found ways to keep us in subjection under them. But it's all the will of the Most High, because this was prophesied in the Scriptures. Uh, let me get that. <clears throat> This is Genesis 49 and 19. Gad, a troop, shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. And that's what happened. The North American army overcame and took over Gad and sent them into uh, reservations, you know, um, and they were being wicked over here as well with their mysticisms and uh, pagan practices when they originally came over here so they could try to keep the laws and the things like that. But, um, so yeah, it said a troop shall overcome him, and that and that's what happened. So they didn't just overcome the southern tribe, they overcame the northern tribe as well, Esau. All right, they put us in slavery, and they, they put the, this, um, the Native Americans and the Northern tribes in subjection as well. But the bulk of the slavery fell on the so-called Negroes. This is Isaiah 14 and um, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? And it's talking about Esau and also um, what they built uh, Babylon. All right, and they're going to be cut down 
to the ground, the ones that uh, weakened all the nations. And one of those nations that were weakened is the children of Israel. <clears throat> all right. Um, verse 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And that, that really represents the congregation of the Israelites. All right. They wanted to exalt themselves above us and to go out into space. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation that represents the princes or the, the, the true rulers, the Israelites. So they wanted to rule over us, not just the dark skinned people, but also, you know, not just the, um, the Negroes, but also the Northern tribe, the Latino tribes and native Americans. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. See that? And that's when they brought the northern army against us. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to get something else real quick. All right. So in the, in the north was what? America. Okay. Uh, north America, South America, which was named after Amerigo Vespucci. All right, so Revelations 11 and 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. That great city is Babylon, today known as, as America, uh, North America, South America. And it, uh, now people were what, spiritually dead, Native Americans being pushed into reservations, uh, so-called Negroes being uh, pushed into hardcore slavery. And the Jamaicans being pushed into the sugar mills with slavery. And so on and so on with the rest of the tribes. All right, so it's not just about the so-called Negroes, but the, the Native Americans as well. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, that's America. All right. And it says here, um, my bad, I got an order, I got to go. All right, so it says, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and they shall not suffer their dead bodies be put in graves. They didn't give us any rest. They didn't tell us the truth. You know, they hid it. They kept the truth from us. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, see, even making merry with the Thanksgiving celebrations, all right? And what you would call um, the slave cards when they would show, uh, pass around cards with gator bait, and they made money off of us, and corporations built corporations off of our slavery, all right? They made merry. What's that, Merry Christmas, Thanksgiving, all right? Um, Fourth of July, <laughs> And send gifts one to another because these two prophets, the northern kingdom and southern kingdom, tormented them that dwelt upon the earth. We used to torment them, them during the times of King David and King Solomon with righteousness. They hated it, all right? And after three days and a half, from 1619 to the, the 1969, <clears throat> 350 years, that's when the prophecy started with the first black slaves really being brought over here to the Americas, not being sold or enslaved, but being brought here to the soils of America for slavery for the Spanish, the Spain, all right, the crown of Spain and Portuguese. All right, so after three days and a half, so after 1969 and 70, that's when the Lord said when they should, uh, mount up their wings, uh, try to mount up as eagles, that's when the Lord going to bring them down. All right. Okay. So now it says here. Um, sheesh. Okay, here we go. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt upon the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, 
and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So they, they, they in fear seeing us wake up to the truth and standing all around the four corners of the earth, preaching in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and coming back together as one nation instead of uh, being divided. All right. So I'm going to end it here. Proverbs 14 and 15. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. All right. So a wise man will fear and depart it from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident, man. They confident in their damn wickedness and their holiday, folly days. But a prudent man, a wise man, is going to look well to his goings in this in their existence in his life and realize while we're here that we should fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, not take part in these um, practices of, of murder, celebrating it, acting like they're not, and then um, celebrating these idols and pagan uh, folly days, man. All right, so I'm going to end it there. This is going to be a quick one. Uh, I'm going to continue these uh, deliveries. And uh, Yahweh Ratazah, I'll continue this lesson later. All right, with that, I'm going to say, Shalom.